Hey everyone, we're here. Sorry about the delay. We thought something wouldn't take as long as it did and it did. So instead of doing a live sewing and stitching and starching today, we actually recorded everything. So we're gonna go through everything for Twilight Stars. And if you have any questions about Twilight Stars, I want you to write them down, put them into the feed, and then we'll answer them live here today. So you can go away with all your questions asked instead of uh, us putting, us just doing it live and trying to catch everything. But I just want to do a couple announcements first. Nothing, nothing like, you know, doing all this, but sometimes I go to shipping and I want to know what's, you know, what are people's concern, what's happening, and then they'll tell me, kind of what's going on. So it was kind of funny because, you know, like we asked you like, Hey, you know, leave us a comment, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, we had a lot of comments or a lot of emails this week about some things because people didn't want to leave us a negative review. So we asked them, Hey, you know, if we can go over that or explain something better than giving us a bad review. So one of the issues this week was this pattern right here. And I will name no names because the lady who who wrote us an email about this, she was pretty nice about, I mean, she was nice about this. And she's like, I don't want to leave you a bad review, but there's some things that really bug me about this pattern. And uh, one of them was, is that we didn't give her a full layout. So I'm trying to get this so you can kind of see. All right. So when you see this, you see what's happening here? We give her about 90%. She wanted like another page. She's like, paper's not expensive. Print us another page and give us a full layout. But my thing is, and to tell you the truth, I don't dictate dictate these. The graphic designer does it. And I always want a full layout too as much. But they're always like, they want to save paper. They want to save trees. They're like, I can just fit it on here and I don't have to put in a whole nother sheet. But we are going to be tracing this onto Fusible Web. All right? So you're going to trace this bottom line here. You're going to do this. You're going to come around here. You're going to you're going to move your paper over to connect this line with this line to make this top arch, all right? And then you're going to do this. And then you can easily fold that over and retrace this part here that's missing. Do you see how what I mean by that? And you do not need a light box for this. So I'm going to show Kaylee. When you're going through your... Uh, fusible web. Do you see how you can see that? You do not need a light table to do this. And it actually shows up way better in person than it does here on camera. Now, if you're not, if you don't do things the way I do things and write the directions, then, you know, you can easily make a template out of this, or I use like um, uh, a folder, like a manila folder, and I use templates out of that. And you only need to do half of the template and then flip it over. And then another thing she brought up is that she didn't like that we did this double-sided. I don't really like that either. But again, don't put it on a light box. You can see this, you put it very nicely through that. So is she just telling me that she wishes I would do better with these patterns and that these are the things that, you know, but to me, this isn't, She's telling me she doesn't like it, but is it enough to really like, because I've seen a lot worse patterns out there than what we write. So I'm just kind of like defending Terry a little bit. But then again, you know, I only had one comment about this pattern and 1500 people got it. So I want to make everybody happy. So I promise to try to do better and make sure that I catch some of that stuff when it does go out. But just know my graphic person is a paper Nazi. All right. I'm just putting it out there. She does not like to waste paper. And you think paper is not expensive. Paper is expensive. It is a lot more. It's probably three or four times what we used to pay for it. And I'm just putting that out there. So I want you to know that I do read these emails and I do ask the girls what's going on. And I really appreciate it. Her name was Rita. I'll just say that. Uh, Rita, thank you for taking the time to do that, but we'll work on it. Okay. Well, and I, like I said, I struggle with her too. I'm like, I want more paper. She's like, well, we don't need it. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So sometimes I lose, even though I'm the boss, it's not right. Right. 
Okay. And then another question that's been coming up lately in shipping is, where's my coupons? I, I, I participated in your, in your program and I spent $40 and I want my coupons. Well, you did spend $40 to get all kinds of free patterns, okay? And the coupon book was part of that. And you all know why we don't have a coupon book yet is because our website still isn't finished. It's up, it's functioning, we're working out the kinks. We have done lots of promotions this year, more than we ever have. And that's to make up for not having these coupons. As soon as we, our website is functioning correctly, we will put some coupons on there. We will not go a whole year without any, but it's not our fault. We, we just got this website up. You all know that. And there's nothing my girls in shipping can do about it or customer service. So don't be yelling at them. All right. And, and, and speaking of yelling or mean or being mean, I want to bring up the, the comment of being mean. Now, can we just agree that when you open an email from Primitive Gatherings customer service, I want you to read it like the person who gave you that email is in a good mood and she's happy, all right? And she wants to help you. Don't read it like she's crabby and mean because you can read the same words and it can be interpreted many different ways. So can we just all agree that my girls are here to help you and they are not being mean? Trust me, they want you to get this. They want to help you because being mean would not be, it would just be not answering your email. All right. So I can read one email one way. And, you know, cause sometimes I get this from my son when I text him, I'll be like, Hey, blah, blah, blah. and he'll be like, why are you so crabby? I'm like, I'm not crabby. I'm not crabby. He's like, well, you said, I'm like, yeah, I said, I'll read it. Like I'm happy. And he's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so let's just agree that my girls are here to help you. And if they're answering you, they're trying to help you. They're not trying to be witches, okay, and mean. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but just try it. It'll make sense. Next up, okay, let's see. Subscriptions. I know a lot of you want to sign up for the Woolbox subscription. Here's the deal. If this doesn't happen within a week or two, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way, and we'll sign you up like we used to, and we'll go backwards and figure it out. Because I know there's about a... There's about uh, 50 spots left in our wool subscription box. And I would love to fill it up, but we can't. It's not on our website right now. And everybody's seeing your beautiful, fresh cut garden blocks and they want to sign up, but it's not there yet. So just give us a little bit. And if it doesn't happen soon, we will do it the old fashioned way. Okay. And then another thing I want you to know, if you're in the quilt box and we make a pattern out of Let's let's say Union J, and it had a five-inch charm and a mini charm in there. When I give Alicia fabric, she only has that mini charm and that five-inch charm and whatever background she uses. So when you call the girls in shipping and say, this is impossible, it does not come out of this, it can come out of that. All right, so know that we try to do our best. To, to make you understand. And sometimes we, uh, to pacify you, we send you uh, something. And um, I don't think that's fair because if we know that that can come out of that, we shouldn't have to be sending you extra fabric for you to finish your quilt. If you made a mistake, say you made a mistake, we'll help you. But I've seen uh, lots of those quilts done. And again, I don't want you to think that the girls in shipping are not taking care of you correctly. They are, but if, if you're wrong, we got to say you're wrong. Okay. Uh, that's just how it is. And I know it's not maybe the answer you want to hear, but that's just life. And so way it goes. And then I just want to talk about one more other things. So I want to apologize for maybe the little peep show you got last week. I am not trying to up my ratings. I am not, you know, I, I, I know you've seen more at a halftime Super Bowl uh, event, okay? But yeah, I apologize. There probably won't be uh, no more short, shorter dresses uh, on. <laughs> but yeah, and like I said, it is what it is. I apologize. That won't happen again. 
I'm like, oh crap, I did it again. I'm watching because Heidi said, well, you kind of did show him a little bit. I'm like, oh, said you need a prayer cloth yeah, a prayer cloth. <laughs> yeah, you just it's just hard because when I'm up here, I'm not concentrating on you know. I'm concentrating on getting you your information. So that's all I have for announcements um, before we get into the quilt along. Oh, oh yeah. One more thing Jess said that people are kind of upset about or asking why this can't happen. Okay, so if you make an order on Comment Sold and then you also make an order on our website, you want them put together to shape shipping or other things, we can't do it. Because, if, I mean, if we had 12 orders in a day, yeah, that would be possible. But that's not how it works. I mean, we have a lot of orders. The girls are busy. And it just, it's just it's impossible. All right. And if you want to come work here for a day, we'll show you. And then you'd be like, oh, yeah, I get it now. You're all more than welcome to come and shadow us here. That, that invitation is open. <laughs> Somebody's like, no, no. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's it for announcements, right? Anything else? All right. And if you have a comment on that, just, just shoot it at me here. Okay. So what we decided to do is I'm going to talk quickly about Twilight Stars, and then we're going to show you a video and stuff like that. And um, we shot four videos, but only three of them in the time. Kaylee didn't have time. So I'm going to go over the supplies you need one more time, because there's always so many questions about what we're doing and people are coming in late and they just don't get it or whatever. So I'm just going to go over the supplies one more time for Twilight Stars. But before that, are there any questions? Oh, ooh, thank you. Awesome. Give us the confetti, Kaylee. All right. Give us the confetti. Thank you, Maureen. We sure appreciate you. Um, and you got to remember, we're here for you. I, we don't do this because you know, we do all these extra things to serve you and your quilting and make you better quilters. We want you to be excited and love this as much as we do. So kind of have that idea when we do what we do. And yeah, we were late today only because we want to give you something uh, taped instead of live because I don't want to miss something. When I'm under the gun up behind this camera, I forget things. Even though I have it on my note here, I'll be like, Oh, I just don't see it. So I tried to do everything taped and we'll insert those videos in today. Okay. All right. So I really appreciate you understanding and just, I just wanted to, you to know that I do care. I do go downstairs and shipping and I do ask them what you guys are concerned about. Okay. Awesome. All right. So let's start off here with Twilight Stars. Now, the first thing before we get um, started is I love that you guys are super excited about this and that you're posting some of your practice blocks. And that is such a great idea. Take some fabric that you're not going to use or if you got a lot of fabric that you are going to use, make a practice block. OK, make sure everything is right because we're not perfect. We could have a number wrong somewhere, but I think pretty much <laughs> I'm not <laughs> that the directions are fine at this point. Okay. All right. So the first thing you're going to do. Yes. Can you just go over like overview of it? How many blocks are you doing each week? Yep. And how does that go? Yep. Okay. So Kaylee, show them our two blocks for this week. So these are, this is, this is this week's blocks. And I believe it's block number one and block. Eight, Hang on. I got it here. Block one and block 48. So these are your two blocks. Kaylee's got them showing up there. All right. Block one and 48. So you can work ahead making triangle papers, you know, doing your charms, do work ahead. You can make blocks. That's why I asked you to purchase this book. So when you have time to sew, you can just sew your brains out. When you don't have time to sew, then, you know, you, you use one you've already stitched already. So it is super nice to have this because this is where all the blocks are. All right. And that is one of the things that I asked is that when you post to get one of our prizes, and I'm going to show you what our prizes are going to kind of consist of, and we will be doing prizes today too. So keep commenting, keep commenting. But um, flash that back up there. So here's what I want your post to look like 
on Stitch with Lisa Bonjean to qualify for our weekly drawing. So you see how I have both blocks in there. I have my triangle gatherings book and I have my triangle paper in there. You don't have to put your worksheet in there. I just threw it in there so you knew I did the eight inch blocks. And if you can put some, you know, you can prop your uh, photo if you want, like I did. I just threw an iron in there and uh, some florals. So that's what I want you to have in your photo each week or you do not qualify. All right. Because I asked for a little support on this. I didn't make you buy fabric. I didn't make you do a lot of things. I put the book on sale at $18, which it will go off sale today or tomorrow. Which one, Jess? As soon as I get in in the morning. So okay, I tomorrow morning, it it's going to come off sale and it'll be $24. So get it ordered if you didn't order it yet. And then after that, then, and then also the triangle papers. I ask that you use my triangle papers for this course. And that's it. Okay. And it's going to be so much fun and we're going to have lots of prizes. So did you do, did you uh, mock up that prize that I gave you? Which one? The one from the charm pack, the sticker, the caramels. Yeah, sure. All right. She'll get right on it. Yeah. <laughs> I brought her a stack of charms. So each week you are going to get a little prize packet. So while she's getting that, um, I'll show you today's prizes. We have three of them. It's a project pouch a couple fat quarters and some caramel. So this is what you're going to win today. If you do a comment on here and Heidi picks your name. And then if you do the little block posts each week that I give you, and this week again is one and 48, we will pick one winner each week for the whole year that we do these. So it could possibly be however many it could be a whole, the whole year, 50 some, blocks because we do have uh, some of them here that are going to be 113 blocks. We are only going to do the I like 98 or I think there's only a hundred in the whole book. So those we're going to do 50 weeks or however that looks. Okay. And we might take off during Christmas or we might do whatever. We'll just adjust. Don't give us any hard, whatever. Sometimes we need to be a little flexible. Life is easier if you're a little bit accommodating and flexible. So this is how we're going to start it. We're going to see how it goes. And that is what we're going to do for prizes. Yes. Where do you want the pictures to be posted? Stitch with Lisa Bonjean. Is that right? Okay. We're not going to do a separate group. I want them out there. And you might get double bonus, bonus points if we find them elsewhere. Like if you want to put them on your Instagram and tag us, Twilight, uh, Stars Quilt Along, Primitive Gatherings. If you want to do that, that is great too. We love seeing that put it on your own facebook page put it on our group but if you want to win the prize we are going to pick in our group but we love it if you post wherever you do your social media stuff if you want to make a video on youtube making your blocks or showing what you're doing hey that's awesome okay so this is what your prize is going to look like you're going to get a charm pack the weekly winner a sticker there's a sticker in here and some caramels and then maybe something else you never know Depends on how I'm feeling. It depends on how how Heidi feels that day. Sometimes I see some of those prizes she gives away. It's like, whoa, holy man! I well, can't I can't believe you have anything left in your prize oh, patrol. I got a lot left. But here's the thing on that. I, I do want to say that sometimes um, when a person has been more than generous over and over and over, and over to us, sometimes the right. prize will be a little fatter. All right, that's our way of saying you know, hey, you're cool. Yeah, or, or thank you for that. So, okay, did you hear that? So if you're always super sweet or she always notices your comments or whatever, she, she likes to give you a, a fatter price, she said. <laughs> so I leave it up to her. There's no rules here. Okay. Awesome. All right. So let's go over some of the supplies you need. First one, starch. This is what I use. I don't know which way to turn that. There we go. Come in. There you go. Starch. You want to starch these fabrics, your background, your fat ace, or your charm squares, whatever you're using, starch them. And I show you in the video coming up how to do that. But let me go through all of the products that we need to, in order to make this thing. And these are suggestions. Some of them um, obviously are more important than others. All right. You need this book, right? You need a rotary cutter and a new blade. 
And just FYI, a lot of these things I'm showing today might show up on comments sold following this. All right, so get yourself a new blade. I like the endurance blades. Jess just brought me some of the big blades that I have here. So make sure you start cutting with a nice rotary cutter and so a fresh new blade. Now, magic pins. These are my favorite pins. I love these. You will watch me use these in the video. So make sure you have fine pins for these little blocks. Because if you have a big chubby pin, and those are those ones with the big heads and, you know, that long, and they say quilting pins, those, those are quilting pins. I don't care what they say. All right? And then you need some rulers. Now, I really love my rulers. I don't want you to try to work with these little blocks with the big 8 by 24 inch ruler. And I don't need to go into the details of my rulers. I explain that a little bit on my video that I give you. So my blocks are made using these fabrics right here. So you need fat ace and you can get two blocks out of a fat ace if you're careful and cut good, cut efficiently. But guess what just happened? Look at this. Hmm. What do you think? Can I add that too? I don't know. We just got the new fig tree fabric in and I think I might have to steal some of these. All right, rustic gatherings and spellbound is what I used in case you are wondering. We still have lots, I think we have background yet if you're still in the, in the market for a new background. So this one is what I used on my blocks here. Come in close Kaylee to get this so they can see this little print. It's just a really little itsy bitsy 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 flower. Is that all you can come in? I didn't want to use a solid. I like a little bit of background. And that comes in gray or orange. I'm going to do some smaller blocks with the orange print. Because you can't have enough triangle gatherings. Strip stick. This is for piecing your seams open. So this helps you lay this on here for when you're... And it helps isolate the other seams. Thread, I love buying my Aurifil with a cone because I go through these, I empty these cones. And um, I gave you a couple color suggestions earlier, but a cream, a light. I don't really like the white white because you can see it in your blocks sometimes if you're not doing that. Obviously here, the triangle paper, this is a, a must. Half inch, three quarters, one inch, or one and a half. Right here. These are fun design boards for you to lay out your blocks. You, It's hard not to do these without laying out your block. Those triangles get turned this way and that way. All right. I got to make sure I have all of that stuff out of the way. Okay, Jess, I think I don't need that anymore. Um, so those are the things you're going to need to do this quilt along. All right. So if you are going to post on Instagram, please use hashtag twilight stars, Q A L quilt along. I think we'll put that in the comments as well. And we will, we will post blocks on, what did we say? Thursdays or Fridays? Fridays. Yeah. Fridays. So every Friday you will get two blocks to post and you'll have the whole week. And then we will pick on Thursday who won. Okay. And how long do they have to post to be entered in the drawing? A whole week. We won't pick until the right before the live on Thursday. So almost a whole week. So they can post right up into the live on Thursday? Yeah. Or do they need well, we need to pick it. Yeah. Well, so we'll announce the, we'll announce the winners on each Thursday on live. Okay. So do it sometime before that. When do you want to pick winners so you're not doing it at the last minute, girls? Should we have them post by Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. Try to do it by Wednesday. Or Thursday morning. Thursday morning, okay? Yeah. But Wednesday would be best. So aim for Wednesday, and that'll give us plenty of time to pick winners and all of that stuff. Okay? Now, before we get into cutting, I kind of explain a little bit. You need to go to lisabonjean.com, and this is where you're going to find this sheet. This is your worksheet. 
And you can print these out and decide what size blocks you want to make. And first off, what size would probably be determined by your skill level. So whether you consider yourself, if you're a beginner, I would start off making some 12 inch blocks. All right, which is this one right here, 12 inch blocks. Okay. And then you look at how big you want your 12 inch blocks. Cause you could make this quilt right here can be 84 by 104 if you're gonna make 32 blocks. So it's a king size quilt with 32 12 inch blocks set on point, okay? If you don't, if you wanna make 12 inch blocks but maybe you wanna make less blocks because you know, maybe 13's in your wheelhouse, it'll still be 67 by 67. So see how you can use this chart and then I kind of explain in the video as well as how to use this page as your worksheet. Um, so the 12 inch blocks, one more time, 12 inch blocks use one and a half inch half square triangle paper, eight inch blocks use one inch triangle paper. And both of these, you need two, you need two five inch charms of dark and two five inch charms of light and two charm papers to make one block. The smaller blocks, four and six, one five inch charm, light and dark, and then one charm paper, okay? And when you look at your your papers, you'll see, when you see this where it has four up, so it's like four squares, that means that's gonna make eight. So that's why we need two to make 16 half square triangles. And then on the smaller ones, there are nine squares. So that those make 18 half square triangles on just one sheet. Isn't that amazing? Right. Okay. And just give you a quick little fun little thing. This is 16 half square triangles, half inch. Isn't that sweet? Oh, this one looks better from the backside. So this is all pressed open. I know some of you are going to do it and those little quilts are going to be so awesome, four inches. And then I just want to point out one more thing before we go to the first video that if you're doing the one inch size, one inch triangle paper, eight inch blocks, you can actually cut your fabrics like four and a quarter or four and this fits on there. This is the only size that you can cut smaller. The other ones have to be five inches. Okay. Or you can just cut five inches and not worry about it. And then they will look like It will look like this, okay? So do you see how I got a lot of extra room on there? I didn't even trim, I didn't even waste my time trimming my whole paper down because you can be like that if you don't wanna be patty perfect. <laughs> okay, let's watch the search video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and we will answer them. All right, it's time to show you how to starch your fabric. So the first thing I do is I usually do this on my ironing board. So I brought over my wool pressing mat onto this cutting table for this demonstration, but I'm usually on my big board in my sewing room when I do this. Now you're gonna wanna take a towel. Now this, you use one old towel that's gone dingy or whatever, and you don't, it's not pretty anymore. And I like lighter ones because when I starch, I like to know if any of my fabrics are bleeding. So the white really helps me determine that. Okay, so then I'm going to not starch my whole piece, like, cause like you said, I, I've got like 11 yards of fabric here for, to do mine, but I just like cut off a big piece for my borders at the end. So I know I won't have to cut into them. And then I cut off another hunk. I think I got about a yard and a half piece here that I'm going to starch. Maybe it's a little bit bigger than that but um, it's folded the other way here, let's see. Yeah, it looks like about a yard and a half that I'm going to show you how to starch. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to lay my fabric full out here. And the obviously the yardage is the hardest to starch. I will talk about how to starch smaller pieces. Okay. So now I'm ready here. And if I have any overspray, see how the towel is gonna catch any of that. 
Now I like to use the heavy duty faultless in a can. Now you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to show you how I do it. Some people use stay flow and they dip and they do all that kind of stuff. This is the way I prefer to do it. I do want to point out though, before I start, that there are directions on this can on how to use it. And you're like, oh, how do you need directions? But there is like a red dot right here on the can and the nozzle needs to be pointing to that red dot. So if your cans haven't been emptying, it's because your nozzle is not pointed toward the red dot. So that's something that I forget to tell people sometimes because I just forget, but there you go. I didn't forget this time. And then they do make a handle for this spray can if, if this bothers you. But to me, this bothers me more than this. So I just, I just do it. And you might want to take a break when you're doing this and not do, you know, all your fabrics at one time. Do a little bit, take go sew or something and whatever works for you. Right. All right. So I am just going to do like a path along the edge here and then the upper part and i didn't say this but i always start from the back of my fabric it's easier to tell where you've missed so now i've got that and then i kind of just go into sections and then i go in between you can do this however you want you can write your name you can make patterns you can do whatever but at the end of the day we just got to make sure that the section is all soaking wet so we're not just going like this that's not how i start anyways you want this fabric stiff and one of the reasons we want it stiff it's going to go through your machine really nice it's like sewing little paint chips or cardboard chips through your machine instead of floppy limp fabric so that really helps when we're making tinier pieces and then when you look at the back of your block when you are done there's not a lot of hairy and fuzzy things on the back you hardly have any of those strings and we all know we've all probably had a quilt quilted and you see like this stray red thread under your uh, cream background right so that eliminates a lot of that so i'm just going to lift this up a little bit so you can kind of see what i've done so you can see exactly where it is starched and where it's not and then you look at it and you see if you have any dry spots like look i got a little dry spot there so i'm just going to go back and hit that spot a little bit and that's why you starch from the back side okay so i'm going to put this back where i had it now what you do is you take from below and you just roll it up on to the parts that have already been starched and then you're going to bring it back until you can see where you were last so now i have wet here and dry all there so then i'm just going to continue to do another pass here and just keep starching Now, I've been searching for a long, long time. So if you have any questions, write them down while you're watching this video, and we'll be able to answer some of them later. We'll either answer in the comments or we'll answer this during the live that we're going to be playing this at later today. And I won't torture you. I won't do this whole piece, but I just wanted you to get the idea of how I do this, because to me, starching is super important especially especially when we're making triangles everyone's favorite shape at least at the end of the day when i'm done it's going to be your favorite shape all right again let's just look at it see where i am see that see the missed spots like right 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 where i am here and right right there so We'll just move that up a little bit and catch them. Before I fold it one more time on itself. All right, so I'm almost to the end here now. All right, so do you see how I would just continue to keep doing that. And then when I'm all done, I'm going to fold it in half. Salvage to salvage. 
and hang it on a drying rack. Now, if you have lots of yardage, let's say you had like six yards here, you could run it in between these loops. You could actually like loop it between these rings on the, on the drying rack. And you would want that to dry naturally. Um, I see sometimes people put it out on the line outside, and that's fine if you don't have any wind. But if you have wind blowing this fabric, that will soften it as well. You want it as stiff as we possibly can get it. And that's how it's going to do that when, when it's dry. Now let's say you have a couple charm squares that you want to uh, starch or maybe you have your fat eighth towers that you want to starch. So what you would do for that is you would lay them upside down and it's really fast to starch charm squares. So you just do that and then you just lay the next one right on top and you just keep doing that and that way all the starch just soaks right into each one of these fabrics. And I like to leave it sit a little bit before I hang it, you know, just maybe a few minutes so all that starch soaks in and it's not like dripping on the floor. So don't be in a hurry to starch and always think about starching ahead. If you need to make a block that day, you need to starch a couple hours before or the day before to make sure it's nice and dry. All right, so you get the idea here, right? So I'm gonna let that soak in there for a minute. push it down. Okay, now I'm kind of lazy. So I just kind of like take a stack and then I lay them on my drying rack like that. I don't separate each one and put each one on there. You can if you want. If you want them to dry faster, do them single. If you don't care, if you got a day, then just put them on the ring in pairs. But I wouldn't, I would do light colors together. You don't want to put a red and a cream together wet and let them sit like that all day. So I hope that gives you a great idea on how to starch and to get ready for this quilt along. Now, I do have a piece of fabric here that is already starched right there behind you, Kaylee. Can you grab that for me? That big, yeah, so those are already starched, but give me that big piece too. All right, so see how nice and stiff this all is, and it's ready to go. And I, like I said, I've cut off a hunk, but have left this all here for that to go. Now, when you are done, you are gonna wanna iron these all as you use them. So I would lay a couple of these starched fabrics together, like four, because that's usually how many I'll stack and cut. So you'll put these all together like this, and then you will iron them nice. I would iron, press, steam every one of them so they are super nice and flat. And then now we'd be ready to cut. So I just wanted to show you, this is unpressed. See that? I have not pressed that one yet. I just folded it up in a big hunk. These have been previously pressed, and now they're like ready to go. However, these are not the ones that are for the quilt along. These are the leftover ones that I'm not going to use out of my tower, but I still starch them because I like fabric to be starched and ready to go when I need the urge. Okay, that's it, and we'll see you for the next video. How about that quilt behind me? I was just drooling as I was watching that. All right, so you have a lot of good questions and Heidi's gonna get me some of those. We're gonna pop them up, I think, on the screen. But no, no, okay, oh, I, thought, I thought we could highlight them. All right, but one of the things that I forgot to mention about starch is that it's gonna shrink your fabric, right? It shrinks it now instead of, if you don't starch your fabric while you're making your block and you're pressing and you're doing the stuff to it, it's shrinking then while you're piecing it together because that heat and the steam from your iron is going to shrink it. So you want it to be pre-shrunk ahead of time. And when you get that fabric wet, you can just see that charm, charm square or that fabric just shrink up a little. So it's almost like pre-washing, but yet we're adding that stiffness of starch. And I did see like uh, somebody asked about layering and bleeding and stuff like that. So, um, I pretty much only stitch with Moda fabrics for the most part, very seldom am I stitching with any other. And I have hardly found anything 
that has run. If you leave things wet, like if you would leave a wet, dark and light, like a red and cream square together, they would bleed into each other. You'd get red out of that somehow. I don't know how it happens, but it does. But um, that, that's why I always do the starching on a white towel, just in case I see any residue of anything that will bleed. But your higher quality fabrics, for the most part, I don't want to say, you know, that they never bleed. But you can always make sure that when you wash your quilt, you throw in a color catcher, especially if you have really darks with really lights in them. Okay, so do we have any questions that we want to talk any other ones? Is it necessary to wash your quilt after you starch it? You don't have to wash it right away. You you might want to if you're going to give it to somebody to use. If it's a wall hanging, no. So one of the things, uh, I didn't used to use starch. I used to use uh, like a heavy duty, like a magic size. But the mag because starch used to be made with corn starch, corn. And today's starch is not made using corn. It's made with something else. So therefore, supposedly, the critters that would be attracted to your starch in your blocks, the corn in your block, that's what was causing uh, bugs to eat your quilt was the corn is not happening anymore. That's what I'm told. And so far, so good. Okay, so let me just a couple questions here. Does storing your fabric cause your need, starching your fabric cause your needle to get sticky or dull faster? I don't think so. I mean, I hard, I'll, I'll, I'll confess, I don't change my needle as much as I should on my sewing machine. And it sews fine right through that paper, right through that starch. And it's that's my juki though. I, I sew on a semi-industrial machine. Would a beginner survive an eight inch block? You bet. It's, it's the same. I don't know if you've seen over the weekend, but my little grandson, eight years old, was sewing one and a half inch strips together and making two inch four patches. He did all the sewing. I just did the cutting and the pressing. So you can do it. You, I, I believe you can. How many yards does a can of starch? Some of us are more heavy handed than others. So some people say, oh my God, that quilt took me three cans. So I would say a quilt, a nice size quilt between three and five cans, a lap quilt, probably two to three. It just depends on how 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 much you put on. How do you dry your fabric? I showed you on the on the drying rack, and I would highly suggest not a wood rack. You could possibly get wood staining like that brown on your light fabrics if you if if it stayed on there too long. So I like the the metal or the ones that are not made of wood. Okay, that's just my suggestion. Wood liquid stay flow work. Yes, it works. Problem with it, I don't like how it streaks my dark fabrics when you're dipping and you're doing all that kind of stuff. So if you can find the right formula for it, I don't think it's any cheaper, okay? To tell you the truth, I think I used more when I was dipping it. So what, I, what I'm telling you today is how I do things. It's not the total right way or wrong way or only way. You take from me what you like and whatever is gonna make you successful, that's what you use. I'm just giving you what I do. And you see in the video how it all turned out. Do you ever double start? No, once is enough. Is the charm square, will the charm square shrink slightly one direction? Yes, it will shrink one direction. So make sure that you trim it up good and it will fit. You'll see it. I did a three quarters in there just to prove to you that it will fit on there. Um, so don't like... Starch it. Don't be hitting it with the iron. Let it dry naturally because maybe your iron will even shrink it more for some reason. Layers. What if the fabric bleeds? Yeah, I can hear. It. Yeah, something's playing in here. I don't know what. Do you know if leaving starch on the fabric for a whole year damages the fabric in any way? I don't think it'll damage anything. It's you. That's what you're I know. Doing. I'm playing in the background. I hear my voice. Is the towel enough to keep the starch from soaking onto the wool? For the most part, it depends. Um, when you're doing a single layer like that, yes. But if you're stacking, stacking, stacking fat quarter or fat eighth after fat eighth, it will soak through the wool to the to the wool mat. Does it damage it? No. It might get it a little stiffer, but I've been starching on the same one at home for a long time. Where do we post the photos besides Instagram? Stitch with Lisa Bongean is probably going to be our main focus for winners 
to post your two blocks. And that's the Facebook group, right? Facebook, Stitch with Lisa Bonjean. The charms don't stick together when drying in a stack. Nope, they don't. Or if they do, you peel them apart and press them. When pressing, do you steam? Yes, I use lots of steam. How does Lisa store her fabric after it is dried? Does she fold them individually to store? Nope. You saw that big stack I had of Fat Ace? I just plop it in half and store it in my bin or on my shelf or however it needs to be. All right. So those are the questions on starch. Okay. Yes. Do you starch your backing? Back, I do not starch my backing. You can if you want. I've never done it. And they don't shrink differently. Okay. When you wash them. At least it doesn't. I haven't noticed anything. Okay, so our next video is, I believe, on cutting? Yeah. All right, so a little bit of cutting here. All right, so now it's time to cut our fabrics. It's nice and starched and pressed. And I like to fold my fabric in half and put both ends together here and so I can cut four layers at a time. So I'm looking at my chart here, and I'm going to make... 95 by 116, so I'm going to cut for the most blocks, and that is 98 blocks. So for 98 blocks, that's my 7 by 8 layout, I need 1 times however many blocks, so 98 5 and a quarter inch squares for my flying geese. That's for the start, that's for this piece right here. And then I need 196 5 inch squares for my triangle paper. All right, now that is for the background. These are just for the background right here. And then I need 393 two and a half inch corners, and that's these pieces. So it's four times 98 for those. So that's the formula for figuring out all your background pieces. Now you can do the math then and figure out how many you can get out of a strip. All right, so I'll, maybe I left you a little bit of math to do, but it'll, you'll figure it out fairly quickly. All right, so I'm going to cut some 5-inch squares here for my 8-inch blocks. But only on the 8-inch block, the triangle paper for the 8-inch blocks is kind of small. So you need two of them. If you trim it on the solid lines here, so you would trim right past the solid line on the dashed line there, that's where you trim that. Now, if you are cutting right now, you could cut these to this measurement, which is four inches or four and a quarter, if you don't want to cut five. So I cut five for all of mine. I have most of them stitched here already. So you see my, my fabrics. I didn't even trim most of that as long as I knew that I was on the corner there. I didn't even bother trimming that. But I know some people are really frugal and they want to make their fabric go the longest they can. So maybe you want to cut these to four inches only on the eight inch size. Everything else will need to be five inches for the charm pack sewing. All right, so now I'm just going to trim up my edge here. I'm going to straight here. Cut that off about a half inch there. Now I'm gonna put it right on five inches or I'm gonna do four on these now because maybe I wanna save a little bit of my background fabric. All right, so I'm gonna cut four and a quarter. I'm gonna cut four and a quarter. Now let's just see how many I get out of one strip and that will determine then how many strips you're gonna need. So see how I don't like that big ruler? I like the smaller ruler here for doing this stuff right here. So I'm going to cut off that edge. Just kind of line up the line on your mat. You never use the lines on your mat for cutting. Now this ruler is exactly five inches. So those of you who are cutting five inches, this is perfect. But I'm cutting four and a quarter for these. So I'm just going to put it on four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Now, if you are like to add them up, if I went eight and a half, I could just slide over. So if I go eight and a half, four and a quarter, one more here. 
four and a quarter. So, and you probably won't get that if you're cutting five inches. So out of one strip, four up, one, two, three, four, five, I have 20 of them out of a strip. So then here's where you can figure out, all right, if I need 98 of them, or I need 196 actually. So you get out your, your um, phone, which I don't have, I thought I had it in my pocket there. But uh, if you're gonna get 20, so this is, I'm gonna need 10 strips. And that is gonna yield 200 and I need 196. So that worked really handy. So this little guy here, I carry mine with me and use it all the time in my quilting. So use your calculator for figuring out these things because my old brain sometimes makes boo-boos. So I always double check it with the calculator. So I would need to do 20. So if I'm gonna get 20 out of there, I need 10 strips then to get all of my five inch or four and a quarter strips. Okay, so I hope that's not too confusing. And then you're gonna go on to the next cut once you have those cut out. I would cut out all of my pieces for my blocks at one time so then you're all set. So, but I do, however, think it's very wise to make one of these blocks with scrap fabric. So just to give you a little bit of acknowledgement that you know everything is right and everything's good. So just cut out one, make one block before you mass cut everything, not even out of this good fabric, out of your other fabric. Okay, so then if I wanna cut my other uh, pieces for my four inch, for my five and a quarter for my flying geese, so I need, then I would cut five and a quarter, cut that way and so on and so forth. So you can figure out how many strips after you do one, cut those, and then you can do your little math on there. And you can do it. I know it's math, and I know some of you don't like it, but I'll try to do it all for you as we go. But for now, just try it yourself once, okay? So you're gonna cut all of your background so you'll be all ready to go. Now, one thing I forgot to point out is that when you starch, your fabric shrinks. So if you're using charm packs for some reason, your charm square will not be totally square because our fabric shrinks one way more than the other. So see how this one is no problem, but if I'm gonna do the three quarter inch, so I'm gonna trim here, trim here on those lines. So I just grabbed the three quarter because I don't wanna I want to make a different size for the demo than what I've already made because I think I might have almost most of mine done. So see how this is not square either? So this is just going to fit. This is the only size that's really, really close. But you remember, you got a little bit of trimming to do on this. So I'm hoping Kaylee can get a good shot of this. So see how that's going to fit on there? So this is the piece I'm going to show you. As, as we stitch. And one of the things that I also do, uh, what did I do with my towel? Did I take that away? Oh, right here. All right, so when I have these done and paired up, I just like to give them a little glue, just a little spray, like that. And then I'll go iron this and iron this together before I stitch them. And then I'm going to place this on there and we're going to be meeting at the machine then. But I do that little bit of glue with the spray starch. And then we will be ready to go at the sewing machine. All right. So we, we discovered, um, we don't, we're not trying not to confuse you guys, but this book is only going to be used for the diagrams. All right, you're not going to be making the sizes you could on a, for a different project, but for this project, we're just using these hundred diagrams for this quilt along. Because why should we print these all out each week when they're all right here and they're handy and you can use them? So if you're looking at the directions in this book, these are for making all kinds of different quilts, but really any one of these blocks is determined when you make these. So when these, this is a half inch, this, this would be a two inch blocks. 
our blocks are different because they have this part on here and we didn't get to this part yet okay we're just making this center so this this is a, a four inch block and then it becomes an eight inch block here so one inch triangle paper four inch inside block so that's what this is then when we add the points it's going to double the size of the block so this is a two inch block and then when we put the points on it it becomes a four inch block on point okay so I know some of you thought maybe you were going to read these directions and do what this book says, but this is really for the diagrams, okay? These sheets, lisabonjean.com, this is your worksheet. And I have Terry working on one more thing for you that we will get up as soon as we can because I guess I never gave you a piece of paper for actually finishing this block. All right, do we have any questions about the cutting. Was there anything on cutting, Heidi, that you found? Not, that found. Not found? Okay. All right. So if you do have something on cutting, just throw it in there now and we will get back to that. And I, I love to stack, all right? I love to stack and cut very efficiently, but I am very good about cutting and making sure things are lined up and making sure my fabric's flat because if you don't cut straight or perfect or accurate and you sew accurate, if they're not cut right, they're not going to come out. All right. Okay. On to the next video, I think. All right. Now it's time to stitch my charm square paper. So I brought this over from where I just prepared it over by the cutting table. So it's ready to go. If you want to put a pin in here, you can. I usually don't. But one of the most important things that you're going to do at this point is you're going to lower your stitch length down to about half of what you normally stitch at. And this is very important because this is how the paper is going to come off easier. So if you don't do this, you're going to have a hard time ripping off that paper. So trust me. I usually sew at a smidge under two and I'm going to put my dial at one. So I'm going to go about half of what I normally do. Okay, so if you have a knee lift, if you have, I take, I've taken off my quarter inch foot. I have one that's just like an open foot for doing triangle paper so you can see well. All right, and I have a neutral thread in here right now, the Orifel 50 weight. And I think I'm ready to go. Now I picked the three quarter triangle for the demo because I'm going to get all of the triangles out of one. So you don't have to watch me sew two. But then I'm going to switch it up for you and go do the other size. But just for this purpose right here, I thought I would do this one. So what I do is I line up on my dashed line. So now we're going to stitch all of the dashed lines. All right. Now it's very important that you stitch on the dashed line. So if you need to slow down at first, So you can see that all of them are stitched and that's all 
how far it's going to take, to long it's going to take to make 16 half square triangles. And actually this makes 18, so you're going to have two extra. So now it's time to cut, and I'm going to switch back because I have something already pre-cut for everything. So I'm just going to switch to the different size now. All right, so I'd, hopefully I'm not confusing you. But now I have this all laid out and all cut already. And see, these are all sewn here, just like I just got done for the three-quarter inch size. That's going to be the six-inch block. These are the one inch size. This is going to be for the eight inch blocks and then I need two of these for the eight inch blocks and two for the 12 inch block. All right, now I have all my other pieces here ready to go. So when we get to that, I will be ready. It's nice if you have a rotating mat. I have one of the OFA cutting mats here. All right, so this you're going to see why I like these little rulers here. And you can stand if that helps to cut. So now I'm going to cut everything on the solid lines. I forget I have a rotating mat, so you can rotate the mat. But I grew up where we uh, I just kind of move my pieces around on my mat. All right, so I always trim all of the outer areas first. So let's do this one as well. And the lines on my triangle paper are really fine, and that's for a reason. That's so you can get the most accurate you can. And accuracy matters, don't think it doesn't. Because if you can't sew and cut accurately, they're not going to be the right size. When you're cutting them apart, if you uh, wiggle off, that's not a big deal. That's just seam allowance. So you have plenty in there if you uh, don't cut it exactly on that center line. That's not the biggest deal. But try to. It's good practice to get that right. All right, and then I, what I want to point out too is that the difference between the smaller ones have an eighth inch seam allowance on the triangle paper, and that's so it fits on the five inch square. And that is no, it's not going to matter in your piecing that that is a eighth of an inch. It's, you've lowered that stitch length, so everything will be fine. All right, so now what we do is we don't tear the paper off yet. We corral all the paper in a little bunch like this. And then I'm going to flip it and throw it onto my mat here, my pressing mat. And I've got a little wool pressing mat here for space. So now I'm just going to start chain pressing. Just needed a minute to warm up there. Now, if you don't have a really nice steam iron, I suggest you get yourself one. Fabric loves steam. And they'll lay right down because they're starched. You can use one of those, um, oh, what are those boards that you lay on there? What is that thing called? <laughs> it's escaping me. All right, so there they all are pressed first before you take the paper off because then it's less distortion. So now the paper comes off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold right in the middle and I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to push right to the middle and pull that right off. So that lifts off very nicely. And I, what I like to do is kind of just stack them in my hand and pull them off.
How come your fingers never work when you're on camera? <laughs> Never always happens, never fails to. This is a good job for your husband while he's watching the ball game. Baseball, I would think, because that's a little slower game. Football, well, you know, that moves a little quicker. He might miss something. Mine likes to help any way he can. And when you have 1,152 of them, it might be a good idea to get some help, right? But luckily on these, when you're only doing 16 at a time or 32 for each week, very doable, right? Okay, I have all the papers removed and it nicely came off just like that. Let's get rid of this, help us push it out of the way over there. Okay, so now it's time for my design wall. My little design board here. Hopefully it's not in the way. I'm going to take those off because something tells me it's not going to fit right away. All right, so I am going to make number or block number 47 here. And you can cut off all these dog ears with your ruler or ruler and rotary color or a scissors, whatever way you like. I like to save these. I have mason jars full of these little cutoffs. I call them quilt seeds. Again, sometimes if you hold them in your hand, you can cut more than on without moving. On the little ones, you'll have little, little dog ears. Sometimes I don't like to remove them right away and I'll cut them off later on, but sometimes that comes back to bite me too when, like I said, when you got a really light background. I'm not used to sewing with light backgrounds. I've just maybe recently in the past four or five years stitched with cream. I was always stitching with tan before that. Gotta remember there's two. So dog ears off quickly. Okay, put those over there with my trash. All right, now I'm gonna follow my little chart here and place these all on. Missed one. All right, looks good. So now it's time to stitch them together. I'm just going to pick these two, these two, these two, these two, then these two, these two, and just go from there. Oh, I need to switch back to my quarter inch foot. All right. Double check. All right. You're going to lay them nicely together and they should perfectly match. They should be perfect, ready for you to stitch. Now one of the things that really helps when you're stitching small pieces is having a single hole throat plate and it really helps when your feed dogs are closer together. Some of the big embroider machines have their feed dogs really close or really far apart and that's really hard 
to stitch little pieces sometimes. But if you get that single hole through a plate, that helps a lot. have my little cutter here but I'll use my scissors that'll help all right and then I always just put them back in the same order all right and then I double check so two going that way two going that way perfect and make sure you're not stitching with a big, big stitch here because you don't want to see that thread in your dark pieces. So I have a fairly light color, but I want to make sure I don't see it when I press these open. So that's where that medium color might look good too. I didn't line that one up good. You gotta line them up good. So back it off, check it, make sure. Yep. I think this machine has been neglected. It hasn't been uh, sewn on for a long time. Double check, all right. And even though you double check, sometimes you turn one. Don't think that it only happens to you. It happens to all of us. All right, now I have my four rows. I don't know if I like that last one. It's off a smidge, but we'll make do. Okay, so now I need to press these open. So we're gonna go back over to the iron, get out our strip stick. that one's done and then to make it easier I'm just gonna like finger press these open that actually makes this go a little bit faster and easier if you need to on these little ones I'll lower my stitch length a little bit I can see a little bit of cream thread in those blacks I love watching people work, so hopefully you'll find a couple little hints here. All right, so there we go. Looks good to me. I didn't 
mess anything up and my points look pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna do one onto two and we're gonna match that up. I always just pull it back so I can see that my seams are lining up. Pull out my pins. I just love these magic pins. And pin the beginning too, if you're a little bit leery about all this. Now I might pin a little bit differently than some of you. I know a lot of you have been with me for a lot of years, so this is nothing new to you. But you see how I pin so I can just run my quarter inch seam allowance there and not have to remove my pins? finger press again to get it started. Opening those little short seams is a lot harder than opening the long seams. seam. Again, always check to make sure those are lining up. Don't just assume because the end lines up that those are on because sometimes they're not. I always try to get away with not putting those beginning and end ones in and sometimes that'll come back to bite me, but I got lucky this time. All right, open that middle seam there. block. I'm just going to trim off these little threads on the side here. Give it a little clean up. All right, so if you want to measure this, this needs to be four and a half. So look at that, right on. And that's all because of those triangle papers. Now let's finish the block. 
And now I need to do my flying geese. So I'm going to take every one of these big ones and I'm going to turn that and line it up. Make sure you're lined up really good. I know a lot of people don't like making flying geese this way. They'll do a square and then put two squares on the corner. And you can do it any way that you like, but I think with the starching, you can do it this way just as good. All right, I got four. All right. I miss my little thing that I just go. Okay. Pressing the triangles now. If you want, you could press these open. I do not. I don't ever press that long diagonal seam on a flying geese or on a half square triangle open. To me, it's not needed. All right, now I don't trim those dog ears off because this helps knowing that you have that corner there if you leave those on. Kind of gives you a guide. I'm lining that up on two and a half. So if you want, you can clip all your dog ears off with the scissors or with your rotary cutter and ruler. So see, I have all of my nice quarter inches there. Nothing's funny or weird. So now we can lay these on our block. Okay, so these first. Check the middle, so I'm going to check that middle. So you can see sometimes I'm not perfect and neither is anyone else and it was just a little bit, my flying geese is probably a little bit big. I could trim that little bit off but I'll just trim it off at the end.
Now if you do get that little bit, like one is just a smidge bigger, put that one down near the feed dogs. And it'll ease it right in. these open get a start so do you see how the stick helps not mess with all that other seams Nice, nice points. Okay, so those are open. So these could go open or they could go to the square. Let's just do toward the square. I'll line those up. Make sure that flying geese, the long sides are down when you're pinning. Two more seams. All right. I'm just going to clean off the edges here. There's not much, but just a little bit. I don't like those little stringy things, like my little um, sewing ends, chains, like when you run off. There you go. Okay, there is my 8 inch square ready to go. Just give it a little thing here. I don't know what's best here to put it on there. And then you can see how get that quick. How nice it is. Perfect eight and a half. And trust me, I am not a perfect stitcher. I will have little things here and there, but 
I, I would rather be done than perfect, I guess. I'm, I'm over trying to make everything perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, I have, this black is really, really, really dark black and it doesn't have a lot of print in it. And this is probably the only one that I'm gonna see that in. I do see a little bit. So I might just take my little black little marker and light and darken those up, but. All right, what do you think? You can do this, right? Now, I just wanna show you a couple little, Kaylee grabbed me the little itty bitty blocks over there. All right, so the, the blocks, they're like actual little pieces, yeah. All right, so if you're gonna do the four inch, this is the size that this is going to be. So this does work the same way and you will still press open just like we did. So don't be afraid, do it, okay? All right, we'll see you back at the next video. All right, okay, so I just realized that we don't have any written instructions on how to put this on, but you saw how easily I did that. All your directions for the cutting are right here for the flying geese, and it says FG, FG, that's flying geese. Okay, so those instructions are that we will put something together and get it on our blog and post it tomorrow for those of you who need that. Oh. Okay, we should shut that off. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, potential spam, perfect. Anyway, um, I do wanna point out that we are using charms, but all my directions told you we needed fat ace or fat quarters because you do need those star points, right? So charms do work if you have multiples, like you probably could get, depending on what size you're making, those, uh, flying geese out of, especially the small ones. I don't know about the big ones, but all my directions were for those fabrics I showed you, either a fat eighth tower or a fat quarter tower. You will just get more variety with the fat eighth tower. So that's why I, um, you know, you probably could get more than a couple, you probably get probably four out of a fat quarter, if not even sneak out five out of a fat quarter if you want to make a lot, a lot of blocks. All right, a couple of questions that we saw going on. Why didn't I use black thread? Well, I could have used black thread, but I don't like when I forget, and I guess that everything in here is up against a color, so it wouldn't have been bad, but um, when, you, uh, when I sew light to light, I would never wanna see black thread. So in these, Sometimes you will have two lights together, like right here where these two lights hit this. I would never wanna see black thread or dark shadow in there. To me, that's way worse than seeing light thread in the dark fabrics. So no matter what, nothing's gonna be perfect unless you wanna go with like a medium gray, but then you're still gonna see that shadow in your light fabric. So that's why I'd rather see the light. And that's why, have you ever seen my school supplies? <laughs> <laughs> I will I will take a permanent marker and just hit those little threads if they bug me that much. But lowering your stitch length to half of what you normally stitch at will eliminate most of that. Once in a while, one will peek through. But um, here, Kaylee, I don't know if you can get a really good close-up of that block I made on video. It came out perfect. I can quit sweating now. All right. But... Um, yeah, so all your directions for your flying geese are in there, but I will put a graphic together and Heidi will have those on the blog tomorrow. And always remember that we will post on our blog every Friday. So that's how you will know what blocks you need to make that week. That's where it's going to be posted. LisaBonjean.com, that's the blog. That's where all that information is. Okay, can you put up the comments, Kaylee? Mm -hmm. Was there anything else that I missed to get started? All right, guess what's next? Comments sold, coming up. And guess what? There might be a lot of these projects that we need for this quilt along on comments sold. So join us there next, and we will be back here every week talking about triangle gathering, showing you which blocks are next too. So you can look for them here on the live or on the blog on Fridays, okay? So see you next time.